And we're back. So, I took this all apart, cleaned it up with a generous amount of rubbing alcohol. That stuff. Wiped her down and went ahead and uh, put some foam tape on the back of this. And as you can see, ta-da! See, it's going negative. It's going negative because it's coming towards us. Then we can click zero. And it'll go positive when it goes away from us. That's the way I want. So, that is two axes is done. So, now we need to do the hard one. And the reason it's hard, let me kind of make it so it's easier to see here. The reason this is harder is because it's got this thing right here. This thing is in the way of the x-axis. So, well, here. open up a another one here and I shall show you Let's move you back here a little bit ladies and gentlemen All right. Carefully packed. I'm sure these batteries are just the best batteries ever. But we're going to use them because I can't. Play. Okay, so we're done with the y axis. So find our batteries here. So just in millimeters because I don't like inches. Okay, so the problem with the x-axis. Can you see that? Let's zoom in a little bit. Woo! The problem with the x-axis. Is this thing right here. Okay. So. If we have this, if we were to just mount this right here, this goes all the way to here. So, that would put this, that would put this, if this was here, that would put this right here. So the problem with that is, this right here will hit it. So, in order to combat that, what we'll do, is we will actually offset this. So, I 3D printed this. Oh, come on, frame! I 3D printed this bracket. This is a bracket that I made a long time ago for, um, what was that for? It's for my first laser pr uh, cutter that I built. So I made all these, it's a 2020 corner bracket. But, what will happen is I will put that right here and it should actually work so that I can put that right about like that and and with an offset like that basically I can still use the full x-axis still so the astute amongst you will say but then how are you going to clean it out? And I will say, that's why God made vacuums. God gave us shop vacs so that we don't have to unscrew this. This is just plastic, and uh, worst case scenario, I'll undo it. But 
honestly, I've had one of these in the other shop, in the back shop, um, in the knife shop. We've had one of these for quite a while. I've never undone this. So, yes, some people undo these to clean it out. I've always just used a shop vac, and I've never had a problem. So, I'm going to attach it right to the end here, because it'll be easier. And some people might not like that. And to them, I say, I don't know, tough shit, I guess. So, how do I do it, though, I guess would be a good question. And then, once I do it, how do I... How do I have the plate hooked up? So, do some look in here. And we have a couple more four millimeter holes already pre-tapped. So we could use those. So it looks like we might have to be creating another bracket. Because, I don't know if you can see. Can you see? No, you can't. There's two holes right here. So, rather than having to drill and tap our own, what I'm thinking is I will create a bracket that will basically kind of take that and kind of go over and down to that. All right, I'm back. So I couldn't uh, figure out how I was going to do this because the problem is, what is the problem? The problem is these brackets, okay? So these brackets, there's a good quarter inch there. So it leaves a good eighth of an inch, which is great, between whatever surface you're putting it on and these. The problem is, so say I put it right here. You can't see. So I put it right here. That is going to get rid of this amount of travel from here to here. It's gonna I'm gonna lose that amount of travel in my x-axis. There's not much I can do about that, or y-axis, sorry. There's not much I can do about that, but because I'm adding on a piece, rather than going all the way to the edge, I can go in a little bit, and I will gain back, you know, granted, an eighth of travel. So, but that's still, that's an eighth of travel. An eighth of an inch of travel is, uh, is decent. So, in order to do that, this I can just move in. I can move that in and I'll gain that back. Let me move the camera and see if I can get you a better perspective. Alright, I got the camera moved into the most awkward position I could think of. So, on the regular brackets, this is what it would look like. So there's an eighth of an inch in between here. A good eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths. So I don't need that there. Okay, I don't need to put a bracket behind this. Um, all it's going to do is just, I'm just going to lose that. So I'd rather have this closer. So because I've got to put this bracket out here, I can move that bracket in. Frame, damn it. Okay. So. Rather than having it all the way at the end, I can move that in. And that will bring this closer. But you don't want it to be lopsided. You want it to be perfectly even, perfectly, what would it be, parallel. You want it to be perfectly parallel to this to give you the most accurate reading possible. So rather than having, it would be kind of like, it would be like this. So, you know, that's exaggerated, but it would be, it would be like that. So it's not going to give you a perfectly accurate reading. So, what I did is, I switched this bracket around. You can see on this end, that's the way the brackets come stock. So, what I did is I took this one, 
and swapped it around with this one. Which, to do that, it's got a little end plate here. So I took that and ground that off. Ground this all flat. And then basically just took this and moved it around here. That gives me this. You can see. I see I ground that all off. So what this allows me to do is get it much closer. That way I gain that eighth of an inch back. Now, yeah, it's a lot of work for eighth of an inch, but you never know when you might really, really want that extra eighth of an inch. So, you know, you don't have to do it if you don't like it. Do it your own way. If you don't like what I'm doing, go watch something else. I don't care. That's how I did it. So, now, I'm going to get this mounted there. And I'm going to create a bracket that will basically go from the bottom of this right to that hole that's already tapped in the back of that. So, and I am going to go ahead and drill and tap into this. So, I'll do that. So, I'm going to get that started getting mounted, and we'll be back. I got this drilled and tapped and got it screwed in. So this works the way it's supposed to. And I also created a little adapter. Uh, I don't know where I put it. Aha! Here it is. So I created this little adapter using one of the brackets that it came with and a piece of plastic that I had sitting around. So, this will go into the hole that's already drilled in there and tapped, and then it will go on to the DRO cinder. We'll mount right on that. Bingo, bingo, Bob's drunk. So, I'm going to get that hooked up. Okay. This is one of the reasons you have to be careful with CA glue. Dustin! Alright, so, got the last one installed. There you can see my super custom made bracket. 
piece of plastic and one of the brackets came with it some C8 glue and another bolt just to hold it together but as you can see it works as intended Works good. Hey guys, I didn't film uh, some of this, but it was mostly sitting in front of a computer uh, designing. So I made this little bracket here. Rather than going off of the, uh, you know, making a bracket where it would come off of the mill itself, uh, the reason I didn't do that is because I started thinking about it, and I didn't want the uh, the the displays to be going up and down with the Z I wanted them somewhere stationary so I decided to just uh, just mount them on the wall be a little bit easier so I got them mounted um, and they work great routed the cables quick and uh, it's done so I it, it seems like it works really well uh, I can zero mount and it seems to read really quick. Whole thing cost me about 96 bucks, I think, something like that. And I've got DRO on my mill. So that's what I wanted. Next up, we have the upgrade to the belt drive. We'll be doing that here in a couple weeks. So just wanted to, uh, to show you the last little bit here. Uh, don't forget to follow us. I'm EJ underscore Maker Toolbox. And Dustin is at Burkett Family Custom Knives. Have a great day.